here we go got a we're back again like i said we're going to be doing a another video in regards to flight simulator well, this one we're going to try one of the airliners now that i haven't tried any of the airliners before so it's going to be a bit of a new one give it a go and i know that there is some performance issues when it comes to the flight sims um when it comes to the airliners inside the cockpit now it doesn't seem to affect outside but inside the cockpit people have said that it has been a bit hit and miss so what we're going to do back into performance mode so not cause any issues I'm going to click onto the sim, you'll hear it suddenly ping the sound on, and then we'll get this set up. Now, for some reason it's facing us the wrong way. Oh, it's because we're just not on the actual... We're just not in the actual um, gate, so we're on a different gate. We should have gone onto one of these gates here, but never mind. We get to test to see how it all looks inside. So what I'm going to do, before we can physically use the ATC, which I will open the box for for you to see, before we can use that, I've got to get the ground power on. So I, it's going to be a bit of a learning curve for me because I'm used to using the one that's on um, explain where it's got all of the stuff already working so there's a lot of stuff here which is inoperative so got to work out how to work it on this particular version so they're all inoperative as well so for the most part get the ground power on We'll request the IFR command. Okay, so there we go. So we've had the readback correct. We've been told is cleared for the airport. So we're going this we're in Gatwick at the moment. What we're going to be doing is flying from Gatwick across to Paris. So that's a real life aircraft there. That one is one which has been brought in like ourselves. There you go. So you've got them talking to to other, essentially, to other um, aircrafts. That's good because you can hear the air, you can hear them all using it. So as for our runway takeoff, so we're climb and maintain eleven thousand. So we know this is going up to eleven thousand. Uh, Twenty six left and departure on one one eight seven. Ooh, okay. It's ground services it should be there now. Oh, this let's go out because this, if it works as I think it does, you should see things happening. So let's request the power supply. We're actually already on it. It doesn't seem, but it should automatically bring it up. But there you go. You got the ground unit coming in now. Randomly, it lets you connect ground power before you've even got the ground unit. It doesn't really make sense to me, but that and because you can't use the ATC without the ground power unit being on, and the ground power unit you shouldn't be able to have on until he's been requested. So, but anyway, let's go for that. Um, let's get baggage. There you go. Got the doors opening. He's got his reverses open for some reason. Obviously, he doesn't want to use the pushback. 
So you see the baggage coming in. I'm also going to ask for the catering service. What I'm going to do is pop that out so it's not on your screen. And then I can use it to the side. And it shouldn't be shouldn't be taking up your view then. Good. Go back to performance mode. So there you go, you see the baggage now coming up. You can also see the catering car just off in the distance as well. There we go. It's quite good because now we get to see all of the um, handling units and all of the, the, the and stuff like that comes with the sim because a lot of them normally have you have to have um, add-ons for. Okay, now let's get the get gateway jetway. Oh, but yeah, I didn't think it was going to use a jetway. I didn't know that jetway would reach all the way over here. That actually reach over here because. Yeah, bloody hell. No, it can't reach. I didn't think... Oh, no. No, it can't reach. I didn't think it would. I don't know what if I haven't put some normal stairs there. So there you go. There's a glitch right there. Unfortunately, that's a shame. It seems to think we are there. And I did think that line would be for that one. I don't know why... It's put us here, and you try to use that stairway, not a st um, jetway, not a stairway. But that's fine, we'll just imagine. So why does that? Let's go back inside. And let's get this thing set up. So it automatically has the ILS on. That's fine. What else? So that's on as normal. Oh, half of these are inoperative, okay. Right, okay, so we can't really do much on that one. So it's got the old RAC, ARAC data on it, but that's fine for this stuff because it's, you can't upgrade it yet. If we go to pop, does that cure us? Does it let us pop it out? No, it doesn't. Okay, so we're good. If we go to the like plan is automatically pulled in because I've told it what I wanted to do so it's added it in as standard as you can see down there that's the route we're taking today we've got our R navs we'll put those in shortly I don't know if it will physically let me do that but we'll try um, doo -doo -doo -doo, airport let's go back to flight plan I want to select that airport it did tell me what it was going to be taking off Runway 26 left we're taking off from, so departure. 26 left. And it hasn't given us this bit, so we're going to add that in and accept that. So there we go. It's been a long time since I've had to use this. It's going to take a while to get used to. So we've got the top edge. It's all set up on there. That's already got a V speeds as well, which is unusual. I'm not used to it doing everything for us. That's fine. Unfortunately, the tablet doesn't work yet either, so we haven't got anything to physically get all the data on that we need for zero fuel weight and all that lot. I don't know if this really gives us all the information we need. It's not a problem. Move that out of the way of the chat in case somebody decides to have a chat. So... Go to the next in it page. Zero fuel weight. 
It just doesn't give us a zero fuel weight. It gives us a max fuel weight and all that lot. So I'm, I can't bother to work all that out. Unfortunately, it's not fully intuitive yet. Our cost index will go 24. It doesn't give us the information. I haven't done. I'm not doing a sim brief flight on this one. This is just a quick check to see how it works. Um, they are all turned up full. see now that they've all pulled away so that's good position one for flaps because that's what we want for takeoff move across that's an operative as well parking brakes on squat codes in Okay, so we don't need that page. Let's would will it let us cycle through the pages? No. Okay, so engine page, bleed page, pressure page. No, so they don't all they not like all the pages work yet. Okay. Useful to know, but we're gonna have this as managed. That is managed. That's managed there. That's what these little dots mean. It means basically it can be pretty complicated. This is actually not as complicated because half of it's inactive. When I do my explain, all these buttons can be pressed. But as you can see, like this one here, I press it, nothing happens. It just says in op. Whereas on the one I normally play, it has it all. Now we've got faults here, but that's because the engines aren't running. What we're going to do is get the APU started. So we can get ground power off. I'm going to stick this display back into normal. Um, we'll get the flight directors on on both sides. Yep. Okay. Oops, plenty of auto thrust off for a minute. We've got three green lights there. We'll go on it on max for. Uh, are these operative? Nope, so I can't do these either. Okay. Can put the terrain radar on though. Good, good, good. Really confusing me that I can't be when I can't use the stuff that I not when I can't go through it the same way as I normally do. Okay, so let's quickly go to our ATC. We'll turn them to wait wait for it to come up as being available. APU is available, which means we should be able to come off um, ground power. There we go. This is actually not as complicated as it should be because of the fact I can't actually do anything on this one. So I can't even put the packs on. Right, okay. Useful to know. Yeah, I can use the engine bleeds, which I never even used with the normal one. So I want to turn all the pumps on. These are all in up. Can we at least test? Nope, can't even test the fire. So I just mean engine fires aren't set up on this one yet. Right, we can now put on the nav and the beacon light. We'll stick the wing light on, just okay, we're going to put that uh, taxi. We're not going to be using it. We're not going to be we're not going to be using the tug. Oh hello, that light's why is that light shining through? Not that light. Wow. Okay. Got a bit of the taxi light seems to shine straight through. Okay, let's. Let's get rid of that jetway, even though for some reason it's not actually connected. Because something that they need to work on, I think. Because look, that jetway is now moving. Because apparently that jetway is on that door. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Let's go to the Perth page. Takeoffs. We're going to be using. 
Uh, we don't have the performance page, do we? So I don't even know if it lets me use the flaps. Does it let me use flaps one? Yeah, okay, flex temp. It doesn't give me all this, so it's gonna make that really difficult. Does it just give me the flex temps and stuff? No, there is a lot it needs to still work on to get this quite right. It lets me input the stuff, but it won't physically, doesn't actually give me the stuff to pull in. Right, okay, so. What we'll have to do, speed. What's it say? V2 is 135. So we'll just go with what it's telling us and hopefully it's right. We get those in. We need to quickly go on to clearance. We need to see the ATIS to find out what. Right, so this is basically giving me all the information for wind, temperature, I need to know what my Q&H is. Altimeter decimal five niner. There we go. There we go, so that's that done. And the speed brakes as well. Yeah, okay, we get it. I go off. So what I'm going to do, because it doesn't have all of the standard checklists here, I'm going to quickly check to make sure that what is operative I've done, because it's throwing me off now that I can't. Batteries one and two, there we go. So that's now ticked. That one's ticked. That's up and that's on, yeah. External power, that's been done. Yep, that's been done. Engine bleed switch is on. Yep, they're on. Yep, that the master switch is on, because that's that one there that I've already done. APU start is on, that's already done. Yeah, we've already done that. It started APU bleed on. Wouldn't normally do that until we've been pushed back, but it seems to want us on that. Yep. Fuel pumps are all on. Yep, we've already done them. Beacon lights on. Already turned that on as well. So there we go. I hear what sounds like another plane. Is there another plane near us. Oh, it's just our APU's loud on this one. Okay, it's fine. So there we go. So we got those done. Next checklist: thrusters in idle. Help to bring the old trusty flight stick here. There we go. Yep, they're in idle. That's fine. Yep, idle. Going to put that to start, and then we're going to put engine two on. We should. Start seeing something happening down here with it start there you go pressure's building up and that will be going so if we go outside let's minimize that a second oh you can't really see it because of the light but when we start this one up you'll be able to see it that's fine we'll do it on that one instead but you can see the engines now coming to life on that one once that settles we'll move to the next one Yeah, that's been done, that's been done. Okay. Yep, that's ready for the next one to start now. Uh, if we go out on this one. You can see the blades there just starting to spin round. So 
There we go. We've got the engine started on this one as well. There we go. Um, one thing I am going to quickly get up is my Navigraph information for this airport. So I know where. Oh, yeah, Navigraph charts. So I know the taxi routes. And then when we do that, and then go to Navigraph charts. There we go. And then what that means now is I get all the chart information for that airport. So where are we? EGKK for Gatwick. I'm just going to be in a pain, so we'll just type in Gatwick instead. Gatwick. I don't think you'd recognise Gatwick, so why won't you give me... There we go, London Gatwick. Open charts. Run the taxi charts to get past the briefings. Parking stands. Is it you? Yep, so there we go. So I'm going to hold it up to the camera. You might not be able to see it very well. I'm going to have to turn this bit on for that so you can, so I can make sure I'm holding it up right. But what I've got on my phone is essentially all of the airport information for taxiing. And by doing that, it means I can now essentially um, take off and for whatever taxi route they give me. I can use, so yep, that's done, taxi that, yep, it's all stabilised. We can turn the APU bleed off now, and we can also turn off the master switch. Pickle them, and there we go, that's all that done. So, very easy on this um, on, on this version of it, so it's what, not quite study level yet. So now we've done that, let's get the IFR taxi and stuff. Quebec Kilo Upper November Alpha November Zulu Alpha Alpha November and Mike. Okay. Let's have a look and see where we are. So here we go, we're over here. We're going to go via Quebec. So for Quebec to Kilo, where are you, Kilo? Yep, through to Kilo. And we're on 26 left. Okay, so I can see the route it's trying to take us. Kilo across to Papa, Papa down to, was it November? November Alpha, so... November Alpha, so we're crossing over that. Oh, it's a bit of a weird way of taking it. Then back to November Zulu. Yeah, it's a bit of an unusual way. One thing I will say, if you do struggle with that kind of stuff and you don't have access to the charts, what you can do, and I'll show it you, if you go into assistance, you can potentially put in... Um, where are we? The navigation name... I think it's this. You can turn that on. Yeah, there you go. Just to give you an example. So what you can do is it then gives you the route it wants you to take all the way down to the runway. So you can do that if you want to. I'll leave that on just so you can see the route I'm taking. I've already found it on my phone, but it just means you guys can visually see which way I'm going to be turning. So I'm going to go to ground services. 
normally we would have done pushback by now already. What I'm going to do, don't want to blind the guy, so let's turn off the... Um, those lights, we don't want to blind him. We can actually turn the wing lights off now as well, while I think about it. Wing lights off. The strobes on. Oh, one thing, I don't know if it's set. No, all these are inoperative, okay, so that's fine. We'll put the dome light dim bright. Thing is, it seems already relatively bright in here, so I don't think I need it. But we'll keep an eye in case it suddenly goes darker. Oh, got to turn the parking brake off. You ain't going to move us anywhere if I've got the parking brake on. There we go. And you can see now the tug is now pushing us. Push back steer to the right. We need to steer to the left. So what I'm going to do is let him push us back further. I know it is. It does help. It makes it a lot easier because it means now if you don't know what you're doing and you don't have access to the charts, you can follow that line all the way there. And it has assistance like that all the way through. This is what's good about this particular sim. A lot of them have a really steep learning curve. Whereas on this one, you can actually... Let me just steer it to the left. You can actually get it. There we go. You can actually get him to, um, you can essentially get it to be as true to life as possible, which means you'd have to write all the charts down, which I did start writing down. But just to make it so you guys watching can see where we're supposed to be heading, you know, I'll, I'll pull it up for this particular one. The next time I do this, I won't do. Just turn this around so we can see when we're lined up with this line here. That will be close enough. Let's tell it to stop. It's going to push us a bit far. But that's fine. And then, yeah, so you can have that. You can have it to assist you in showing physical points of where everything is. There's a plane coming in there. And you can also have it so it um, helps you with the flying, not with the flying. So you can have it, it, you can essentially get it to help you as much as you want. You can have it down to a simple pickup fly you can even have it so it's already put you on the runway and you're ready to go you don't have to do any of this and you can just take off and fly or you can have it like you see there like i've started at a gate and get it all sorted you didn't i didn't have to go through all those procedures there but i wanted to just for a bit of realism and then take it from there so so it is really well tailored for people that are new to the sim and it's all sim world and new and um, experienced as well there will be some new aircraft coming which will be a lot more detailed than this and they might even improve this one over time i know pmdg is a manufacturer of aircraft for simian sims and they've already got a 737 that they're working on which will look really good when this one comes into it so we've done with clearance i believe so let's go across to the tower Why is... There we go. I don't know what was going on there. It wasn't letting me turn for some reason. Stop clicking you. Yeah, let's get a bit of power and we'll start taxiing across. Now, if anything comes our way, you can see there, it's pointing out where it wants us to stop as well so it gives you as much pointers as you require which is really helpful and useful like I say for people that are new to it when i'm using x play normally i don't get any of that i've got to do it all nat naturally in smaller airports it's not too bad when you get to the big airports obviously there's a lot you can get lost in i mean you saw you heard what he was saying when he's going you bet Kilo Papa November Alpha November Zulu Alpha Alpha November Mike. You can see just from that, that is all those are different taxi routes. Like we are now on taxi route Q, Quebec. And then in a minute, that turning you see up ahead is going across Kilo. And then it'll take us back left across Papa, then across November Alpha, and straight up to our hold point. So you can kind of see 
for people that are new to it, it can be very daunting, which is why having this is really nice for people. Let's have a little look outside and see how it looks. Cut the corner because that's what I'm, that's what I like doing. You can see got some good lighting effects on here as well. To be fair, with the light strobe lights and everything on it, it's working nice. So this is us going across Route November, I believe. These little yellow signs here are all. Um, giving you root names as well so if we if I get myself leveled up I'll show you what I mean it will tell it's essentially almost like signposts there we go if I zoom in over there you should see that it's saying oh, I can't see it. it's so bloody bright but it's alpha and what's the rest of it They've got the light lighting a bit bright on here. Might have to t turn the bloom down because I think it's turned up too high to make it harder to see. But I think it's basically telling us what's the crossroad here. So you got Mike that way. November, Alpha, November. There you go. So it's telling you Mike that way, Alpha, November that way, Victor that way, Mike that way, and Alpha that way. So it's telling you all the different one, all the different routes that you've got. There you go. In the daytime, a lot easier to read those signs. They don't seem to be very well lit up. Well, they're lit up to the point where the bloom's too high on this one. So this is where we're kind of crossing November Alpha back onto um, November, then Zulu. And that's where it wants us to hold, I believe. And that's the runway. Okay. So we're going to turn this on to the holding point. This red sign here is to tell us that this is the holding point. So we'll come up to that, come to a stop. Now we're going to request takeoff clearance. There we go, so it's telling us we're now ready for takeoff, so we're going to line up with the runway. And then we can get ourselves set up. We'll put the auto throttle on as well. Now, I know in the beta, people were saying the autopilot on this was struggling massively. Yes, I did hear your last transmission. There we go, line up on the runway. Yeah, that's just lined up on the runway. So we're now ready to think about taking off. I just want to quickly check that all these are on. So, yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Flight directors on there. Everything's on, radar details are on, yeah, we're all here. We could disconnect the auto throttle. And don't need the lock on. I'm getting confused here because I'm used to having um a Boeing. Oh, there you go. That's somebody in front of us. It's someone that's basically done what I said you if you wanted to do, as opposed to going on a stands. He's just rendered himself straight onto the runway so he didn't go via the stands. Now, on the sim, it means I don't necessarily have to worry. You can see somebody flying in there as well. This is the one problem at the moment. You've got a, Until the VAT sim network comes on, you've got a lot of people which will just come in, come out. And I now need him to move before I can go through. Potentially, I can fly through because there's no collisions on. But I'm hoping he's just going to take off in a minute. And we've got another plane just there waiting. It'll be interesting to see. Is this guy going to take off or is he just going to sit there? I 
I think this guy's just going to sit there. We'll give him two months, another minute, and then we'll um, just go. He doesn't seem to be moving. I think I'm just going to take off, and luckily there's no... There's no collisions on, or we'll soon find out if there is, but there wasn't previously. But that's the one problem, when people just render, there we go, when people just render on the um, runway, I've just thought I haven't put my landing lights on. There you go. When people just render like that, they can just suddenly turn up in front of you. Come on. And there we go. And we're up. Lift up the landing gear. We've got a positive rate of climb. Yeah, it's very busy today. Um, I will be on a bit later on. At the moment, I'm just doing this. What I'm going... Whoa, look at the terrain radar click clicking. Acknowledge handoff. We're going to la go into London Central now. Contact London and let them know we're here. We're now going through the clouds. You can just see the lights there, but you can see the lights from the actual landing lights coming through. But yeah, it's definitely a lot busier than normal. Move those to airport. It's going to start turning us round. I can lift the flaps back down to zero. There we go. Now, I don't know what the act. My dad says, stop being so lame and get on more, though. Tell your dad that it's not just because he's a one trick pony. Some of us have other hobbies that we like to do as well. <laughs> I'll be on in a bit. We can turn that off now. Strobes on. Beacons on. Nav lights on. That's on. We'll turn those off when we get 10,000 feet. When that hits 10,000 feet, we can turn off the landing lights and put that onto standard pressure. Basically, for those that don't know, 2992, I believe, or 2995, is what's classed as standard baromic pressure. And um, what it is, it, what that means is that the pressure that will change your altitude. I'm always in demand, Alice. I'm always in demand. I don't know how I managed to... Um... Oh, Speedbird, that'll be uh, British Airways. Um, I don't know how I managed to manage to um, juggle everything. <laughs> oh, he wants us to f go to two five zero. Okay. The two nine zero he wants. That is very high for such a short track. Come on, I need to acknowledge mine as well. There's another guy flying there, as you can see, just off in the details. So we're now leveled off, but I need it to take the new altitude. Is it going to? Hmm, it doesn't seem to want to... Uh... There we go. This here is showing our rate of descent, so it's showing how far up we're going. We're now above 10,000, so I can turn off the landing lights. And we now want to go to standard barometer pressure, STD. Yep, it is lucky you see me, to be fair. Very lucky. But yeah, so what I was also saying, 
Oh, are we out the clouds now? Don't know, we'll have a look in a bit. But as I was saying, so what you have is um Um can I just turn this ATC off so it doesn't interrupt me? So what you can do is a standard oh, fuck. How do I pick that does it how do I get off him so he doesn't so he stops talking? Can I just do it down here? Yes I can. Yeah, the, the communication channel there and the communication there is showing two different things. But anyway, right, hopefully it'll be quite long enough for me to actually say it. When you, when you, the air pressure can change what your altitude shows. So obviously when you're at ground level, you want it at a, you want it set to the pressure, which is at the current airport you're landing at or whatever it is when you're under 10,000 feet. That way, you know, a true flight level of where you are altitude wise otherwise what could happen is you could be say in an airport which is a thousand meet feet up in the air because of land altitude so and um and it, and then this will read that you're higher than that and then end up crashing into the actual airport because you're a lot lower than your altitude shows but once you get to a certain height which is ten thousand you put it to standard because that way the air pressure doesn't really matter at that point because everybody, because you're so high up, it's not going to make that much of a difference. It does technically mean that any plane which is in that flight level could be a little bit different, might not necessarily be flying at the exact same height as you if they're in a slightly different pressure zone. So say somebody above Australia at 29,000 feet and somebody in the UK at 29,000 feet, if the pressure level's different, they will actually be at two different um, altitudes because the systems won't be set for the each baromic, baromic pressure. But it's just a standard to make it easier for, so they don't have to update it every single time because it doesn't matter once you get over 10,000. So that's just what the standard is. There we go. Let's have a look and see what different camera design angles we've got. What have we got on the quick views? Oh, nice. Nice wall there. Have we got any of them that show? No, so we've got no cabin views, which is a bit rubbish. What's the land oh, landing views? Just pulling us up closer. Okay. And these are just our instrument views. External. It's a bit dark to see anything, unfortunately. What do the showcase cameras show us? Oh, that's a wing camera, so you can see everybody inside. That's underneath, so that's a landing gear view. Oh, hello. It looks like we're icing up. I'm, oh, there you go. There's a there's an external view outside the window, and this one should be at the other window. Looks like all the lights are off in the um, cabin. There we go. We're outside the clouds now. Look, you can see the ice on the back of the plane. Now we're all on the front edge of the plane. I wonder if I turn the lights on, if. If I turn the lights on, will it reflect off the clouds? Let's have a look. Let's put one of the landing lights on. No, it doesn't. But you can see the cloud level going across there. That's a shame. I was hoping that might actually show up because that'd be quite cool. We've got all the clouds and everything outside now. Um, the stars. 
we're still at climb. We're not that far now from our climbing altitude, but what I'm going to do... Have we got... Where's our anti-ice? Tell you what. Let's make it easy. No, I didn't. So say again, because I wasn't listening. Yo, right, Joey, how's it going? If it wasn't cloudy, yeah, you'd be able to see land. What I might do in a minute when it levels off is I'll try and see if I can change the time of day. I know, oh, not Joey. Uh, did you ask? Can you please repeat? Okay, so we will. We'll do that. Now. Have we got... The question is, have we got ice? Where's the ice um, controls on this? I can't remember. Gone. I need to find the ice. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Go on there. Let's let them know we're here. So tennis just go on as normal. Um, it doesn't look like it's got the um. The packs don't work, so I can't do them. Ah oh, well, we'll just leave it, and then hopefully, if we won't completely ice up. Otherwise, this is going to get very interesting, very quick. Okay, so we're at our altitude. All right, bloody hell, three, 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 zero. Oh, now you want me to descend? You just told me to go up two, three, zero. You. It should start to lower the plane down. Oh, bloody hell. There is a very high possibility of that, to be honest. Very, very high possibility of that. Because I'm on live, it won't let me change the, uh, the time of day. So I can't actually... It's locked my time of day, so I don't think it's going to let me change it, is it? Yeah, look, weather's locked off. So now, unfortunately, until we start descending, I'm not going to be able to show you out the um, ground because it's too... Oh, you can see the coastline there. Let's have a VFR map on. We'll see which coastline that is. It's the French coastline. So there we go, people. We've got the French down there. And a lot of ice on our tail. So hopefully not... It's not icing everywhere else. There's a very high possibility. I'm not going to lie. It is a very high possibility. Because this is my first flight in an airliner on this particular simulator. So, we'll soon find out. Oh, shit. Don't want to do that. That should have gone back to normal. We've not got any error messages come up, which is always a good thing. Ah, bonjour, mademoiselle. Ça va? 
Or really, it'd be Bonsoir. At this time of night. I used to think there was something up. Oh, anti-ice, here we go. I knew I'd seen the anti-ice somewhere. I knew I was being blind and I'd find it. But... So there we go, we're now flying down. Okay, acknowledge the handoff. Yes, but it's um, evening now, so it's just what you say. <laughs> oh. Press the wrong button. Apologies for that. I'm trying to see if it'd let me sign in on the chat, but it won't uh, type in yet, so. We are going down, though. Not in a bad way, just quickly before anybody starts panicking. <laughs> It's, it hasn't even got the... Oh, no, it has. Here we go. I'm surprised it hasn't told me to put that on. It should be telling me to put that on. You tune into Paris Centre. Sort it out, Alice. Yeah, that's right. Sort it out. Descend and maintain 10,000. Okay. Descending. Descent and maintain nine thousand feet. Keep speed below two five zero knots. Expect ILS runway eight left approach via MOPA transition clear to MOPA CTG one nine or nine or zero. Okay. It says less than two five zero, so we'll set that to two five zero there. Let's see once it gets down below 10 if it will automatically change it which it should do now where's my range we are what's that 60 so we're about 50 nautical miles out is that 50 or is that 80 60 You can kind of see up in the distance there. As oh, soon as I've sorted this out, I will get us in. Um, cruise, descend. I want the approach phase. I don't think they've told us what the Q&H is, have they? No, they haven't. Okay, so we don't know what that is yet. Let's get the chart up for landing at um, Paris. LFPG, that's the one we want. We want the approach and what runway are we approaching at, did he say? Joey, Joe, Bob. <laughs> okay, so we're going runway eight left. Eight left. So does that have... Runway eight left. Does that have an ILS three approach? Oh, let's have a little butchers. Yeah, cat three. 
Yes, we're cat three. Okay, so that's fine. So, don't know what the temp temperature is at the moment. Um, doo -doo -doo. We know what it is up here, if it shows us. Should be on the display just there, but it's not. Hmm. Getting down to that, I need him to... They want us to slow down, so I'm going to slow us down as well to round two, four, five. I'll put it at two. And that's so the MDA. Let's just quickly put the information in and here. What it's doing that? So where are we? Do, 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 do. Cat three fifty. So two five zero two five zero. Uh, we're going to go full flaps config. We don't have that information, I bet. Nope, they won't auto pull it in. We haven't been told what the temp of the Q&H is yet. I don't know if Cat 3 actually works on this yet, so we'll soon find out. If not, I'll be taking over. We go outside, you can see Paris there. I bet, is that Paris? Or is that Paris? That doesn't look like Paris. That's too small to be Paris. There's our D cell point. It's definitely not Paris. Paris is way off in the distance, so we're off there. I don't know who that is. How dare, how dare they um, be below us? I am expediting my 9,000 feet. Look, I'm going down. You could, I thought for a second, I was like, hang on a minute. No, I'm not. Okay, acknowledge the handoff. Which means that's Paris over there. You can it's quite good, the light effect for the clouds there is quite pretty good. I've not seen that yet. I like to think that's ice and not just a really bad paint job. Two nine a decibel six seven. Ooh, that. Two nine. Oh, that's nah, not put it in. Let's acknowledge that. So we said two nine six seven point six seven. Two nine six seven. I'm gonna pull this out now and put. Two nine six seven. What happens if I put that down as managed? Let's go with ice, yeah, let's go with ice. When did what come out? This game, um yesterday. So it's still got a few things to, a few quirks it's got to work through. I'm sh um, I don't know what the temperature is, so... We know flight plan, arrival, we're going on 8 left. No stars and no transitions. Left, there we go. So it's now setting us up a plan for going into. Yeah, I heard it, but I'm not paying attention to it. I don't know where he's taking us, but yeah, we'll we'll follow it and see what happens. No, 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 no. We don't want that. We want to stay at nine thousand feet. Paris Center CTG one nine nine zero is out of nine thousand seven hundred feet for nine thousand feet. 
There you go, ILS 8 left, so it automatically put the information in. Pressure's changing. I don't know why he's turned the airport, why he's turning around on the spot, but, you know. Ah, we'll go and see what happens. We're getting there. We're now flying away from Paris. Hi, Paris. That was nice meeting you. This, I think one of the um, one of the passengers realised he got on the wrong flight. <laughs> I don't know why he's turning around on the spot, but he's now telling us to go this way. Oh, I bet I know why. Because I've cho chosen the airport. It's now taking us up to Son. So I want to take it past that one. So if I go on to flight plan, is it Subox it's taking us to? No, so sun. So sun, let's go up. Where's so sun? So sun's not there. Well, that's useful. Let's give us a waypoint that's actually in our flight plan, shall we? The other thing is, normally when you're in here and you cycle down, it will go cycle through them on here as well, and it hasn't. Is that Sue Box there? So that's Sue Box there, which means Banox. <laughs> These are some dodgy names. Banox is over there. So let's go Banox. Um, if I go direct to. There's Osun there. Right, it's not letting me change it, so let's go. Man, not. Okay, I think I've broken it. It doesn't work on here. It's this sat this Mac do isn't set up properly. Cause that's where we should be going straight to now. But if I look on here, it's not on here. And look at all the lines it's adding on here. Right, okay, we're gonna have to. So, yeah, the flight plan isn't really doing too well here. Oh, there we go. Removed it. Yes, that's exactly what it is. I like it. It's a Mac don't at the moment because the Mac do is not working. This is the problem with sometimes default aircraft is you don't get the full functionality that you should do. So for instance, when what I did there should have over river, overridden that waypoint there and taken us straight down there, but instead it started taking us all around the routes again, which obviously you don't want to do. So for whatever reason, it had, um, it doesn't let you delete because the direct two should skip, skip out. Well, the pressure's going up. But it's not, we're not too far away. Once we get there, we'll turn around and then it won't take us long to get there. I mean, it's only there. People in this runway are going to say, I'm sure we just saw this go over. Hey, look. The ice has gone off. We've gone low enough that it's now defrosted the plane. Yeah, the Mac Do is just a thing people say. It's not actually a Mac Do, it's MCDU. MCDU, but everyone just calls it a Mac Do. In Boeing's, they call it an FMC or FUMUC. <laughs> they don't call it that, but that would be funny. Right, 
But we're getting there. Are you still on, Joey, or are you have you disappeared? You've been very quiet. I don't know what that is. Okay, yep, yeah, final to there. It's a shame it's not complete uh, like the normal versions I quote that I'm used to, but what can I say? It's been out for a day, let's face it. Um, everyone has said the airliners are the least ready out of all of them, which I can see that because there's so much inoperative on it and the systems that don't work quite right. But the default pretty good most people for study level would pay anywhere between 60 to 90 quid just for the one plane i think x plane the tow list which or the flight factor which do that which do this particular unit and um it's um yeah and it's very much 90 quid so for default coming with the actual game is pretty good if you ask me Ah, oh, okay, fair enough. That would make sense. Let's have a quick look and see what we got. That would make sense that it would be like that. It's looking pretty good out there. How far away are we from here to when we can start swinging it round again? Onto our approach. We're not too far away now. Once we set that up, it won't take um, long for us to physically land and get us there. And then once we'll do that, I will come back to Paris, but I'll change, but I'll go in a little aircraft and I'll change it to a light, um, make it daylight so we can actually see what's going on. I'll keep the same weather, but just make it daylight so we can actually have a look around or here. And see if we can see the Eiffel Tower and the Arc de Triomphe. Got any crisps back there? Been a bit peckish. <laughs> oh, here we go. So, where are we? We're coming up on it now. So if we were a bit higher, I could go faster and then I'd be there quicker, but it wants us to maintain this flight level, which is a bit of a pain. But yeah, there we go. Don't think we need them on anymore. Lost my lost my pilot, my um co pilot. But if we go to the front and do it this way. There we are. Hiya. You alright? Bit of an empty plane now, isn't it? So there we go. So this is... France over here. Paris is still over there. At least it's got the light pollution right, which is pretty good. Come on, hurry up. I want to get this thing landed. All that because it didn't give us the landing until a lot later. Normally, you see, you'd be able to press that and it would give you the option to go direct there. But as you can see, it's not letting us do it. I don't know what user is. Yeah, I think he yeah, has gone for a be bevy. Is that Joe who's gone for a bevy? Is that or is that. My co-pilot, probably both. <laughs> yep. Yep, COVID will definitely do that. So we're running a reduced passenger service at the moment. I wonder what that is over there. I'm intrigued. Just for those that are curious, because I know some of you might be wondering... The frames when it comes to using 
the air, the um, airline is, is very, very poor. It's strange though, it's only inside. If we go outside, they shoot, they start to shoot right up to roughly where you'd expect it to be on a flight sim of this caliber. But inside, it just really struggles. Which is a shame, but again, new sim, it will get optimized as it goes on. Well, we're getting up to our waypoint we're going to be turning shortly. What we like to see. Okay, so. So, we'll just put on the airport so we know what's about. Do, 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 do. They're all okay for the time being. The ILS information, we don't need that yet. Localizer. The approach button, what's that one? Tell me. What I can do is set the brakes for what we want it to, ready for when we get go down for the landing. Speed brakes going to be get the spoilers. It's already armed, which is good. That's what we want. That's off. We're not going to put the flaps yet. We're not ready for flaps. Um, do, 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 do. Yep, there we go. We should be turning shortly. Two nine zero seven two. Oh, it's going the other way. Why are we not turning? Come on, boy, pilot. What's going on? Auto pilot, turn us. We've passed, we've passed the waypoint. We should be going to use it now. You're not physically going to take us straight yet there. It's going to take us straight over it. Bloody hell, talk about pernickety um, autopilot. Got to go straight over it. Considering how far away we are from landing, we are low. But still... Be good if that was modelled, open the window, slide that open, just jump out. Goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> Everything else is all set up. Let's see, I did do the perf page, so the approach is all set up. When we get to roughly there. I oh, know. I chose the real one, normally it lets you change it, Paul, but because I've chosen live, it's um, live traffic, it's it's blocked out the weather, so I can't do it. So what's going to happen is I'm nearly at Paris, and then once I've landed at Paris, I am going to go into a, um, whatchamacallit, um, a prop plane, and then we're going to put the daytime on. We'll just keep the weather. We'll put daytime on. We'll do a little bit of a tour in Paris in something like a Cessna or something. And yet, you can get there. But, because in, in the daytime, this looks fantastic. I'm almost tempted to break their rules and just speed us up a little bit. Oh no, that's slowing us down. That's not what I want to do. Guess to get us there a little bit quicker. How have you been anyway, Paul? Everything all right? That's our screen. I wonder what that does. Let's do that. So it says.
I've already done that, thanks. Right. Good, good. Um, I've had my um, back to work date now. Um, first week of September. So, come first week of September, I can, I can start back at work again, which will be nice. We're not doing that because I'm going... I'm already at 9,000. Oh yeah, it's because I'm over two five. Oh. Mopa transition. I didn't pull in that. I don't know. Don't know if I want to pull that in because otherwise it's going to make us go all over all around the houses again. I bet. Yeah, I'm going to leave that and we're just going to keep it as what it is. Because if I pull that in, I'm worried it's going to send me back that way again. So you can see we're taking up there, round there, and then straight to the runway. Now normally, like I say, if the FMC was working properly, I could click that and then just do the direct and then miss out all these and just make it a bit more quicker. But for some reason, it's not letting us go past danger. But that's where I wanted to go, to go around there, turn around, and then back in. But it won't take us too long. Let's... Yes, I heard your last transmission. Going to one two five decimal seven CTG one nine or nine or zero. I shouldn't be going this fast at this speed, but to be honest, it is. Um, I, I'm sure I can get myself to slow down once I get to that waypoint, and then it won't be too far then. And if not, this is going to be a very hot landing. Nothing wrong with that. Unfortunately, it's cloudy, so you can't even see the bloody stars. Picked a lovely destination, a lovely time of day, didn't I? But at least the ice has now come off the plane. To start. We'll get there. Hi, James, how you doing? But yeah, like I say, once I get, once I've landed at Paris, I'll jump it into a, um, into a prop plane like Cessna Extra or even one of the smaller ones, and then I'll set the time of day to daytime so I can actually have a little explore and see what it looks like in the daytime. Bloody hell, Transylvania's up a bit high, only twenty thousand feet above is as. Oh, so he's flying at 30,000. Should be at 10. Jesus. Come on. We're inside the 60. That's the 40. And that's the 20. Got a couple other planes about. See them dotting about around there. It's the right pain that on live it doesn't let you change any of the settings. Never mind. When we get there, we'll be able to sort it out. It'll be fine. Up down there so I can see it properly. And then we can take it from here. 
But yeah, so what we're waiting for was we're just going to try to get to Banox. It'll turn. We're going to turn around from there, go to Subox, USR, and then we hit our deceleration point on our final approach to the runway. And once we've done that, we will be a lot lower and should be able to see a lot more coming into it. And then, like I say, when we get to Paris, we'll start exploring Paris a bit more. Shouldn't take us too long to get there from now. And then we can see how it goes. I'm I'm going faster than I should do just to try and get us there a bit quicker as well because it'd be nice just to get landed and then so I can change it to daytime. The one thing you have to be a bit careful with on this sim at the moment because it's own it's new. They've still they've got a few bugs still on it. If you change the weather too much when you're actually in sim, it will crash the sim. But it's a known bug that they're working on at the moment. So hopefully, once they iron these few things out, and we start getting some more study level air aircraft, then all these switches and everything will work as well. Because at the moment. They are all, for the most part, other than the main switch, is all inoperative. Which is a shame when you've come from things like the Tolis or Flight Factor and stuff like that. Weather's radar sorted. We've got the speed brake ready for when we get there. Once we get make this turn, I'll start slowing it down. Then I'll be put... Um, yeah, sorry. Just checking to make sure that wasn't for me. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll um, start slowing it down, putting the landing gear, the flaps and everything. We'll get this... This bird down. Now, I think it's over there, which is where we will be heading. shouldn't take us too long before we start to turn because it likes to take us straight to it so it'll do that and spin it around relatively quick so if you have a look that's the 20 mark we're looking for so when LFON comes there if I switch that oh, switch that down to 20 it will then let us it will then let us um, see that one so we're getting there we're getting there. Yeah, we've got a few people on today, which is good. It's always nice to see some new faces. And um, I will be putting on the challenges as well on this uh, by making a few videos. So all the challenges that you get on it, like landing at Cheval, um, St. Bethany's and stuff like that. And Bartholomew and all that lot. I'll um, be doing those challenges and then uploading them as videos as well, so you guys can have a look and um, see if we can max out the points. Because this on this particular sim as well, you get points for making sure you you level off properly, land in the right place, and you don't run on for too long, which will make it a little bit more interesting. Because then you get to see how you fared against other people. So I'll be doing a few videos on those as well. I might even do one or two in a, in one of the live streams, but I'm hoping to start a um, yep 29 subs. That's right, Lemmy. I'm hoping to try and get a few more than that um, in the next few weeks. Hopefully with this content as well. But yeah, if you do as Lemmy's put not kind of uh, put in and put a nice little segue to uh, if you are enjoying the the video, please hit the like button and feel free to subscribe. And like I say. I will be getting some videos like a series on which is going to be a Microsoft Challenges series which will basically be going for all the challenges on the game and seeing if we can how far up the leaderboard we can get and um, see how many points I think a million points is roughly where most people aim for I think the highest I've seen is about 1.3 million points on one of the challenges so it'll be interesting to see and then um, we'll try and see if we can get there as well But it sets the conditions, it sets the airport, and it sets the plane you're flying in. So it makes it a bit more interesting. Because it means you don't know quite what you're going to get. Or you don't get to choose, it does it all for you. 
I have had some X plane ones. I have had some X plane ones as well, which have come through, which is currently in there. That's quite nice as well to, to have. And um, I might put X plane on hold for a bit so I can start doing a few more videos on here. And then that way we can then start. We can then start exploring a bit more of this, and then as more content comes out and more stuff happens with it. Oh, supposed to be contact the power center. Nine Two nine seven four. Okay, he wants us to go down to five thousand feet. We actually then start no no the other way. Pull it, not push it. You see we're now starting to um so we're now going to start our approach, we're gonna descend down to five thousand. Once we start turning, I'm gonna slow us down to where we're supposed to be so we don't over go too fast and too hot into the actual um into the actual runway. Otherwise that's gonna be a bit more of a disaster. some reason Dreamlabs isn't alert isn't doing the alert bot for me where it pings up to tell me who's subscribed so whoever has subscribed thanks for that hope you're enjoying it and we'll have a lot more coming your way shortly so when we should start spin it round shortly Harris is just over there and then we're going to try and see if we can land it what we'll do is once we get it round if we We've got a slight turn going on now. So we'll start going out to manage airspeed. So that should now start to drop. Yep, so our airspeed's now going down as well. We're coming up to our final approach. Speed brakes are down there. We're not going slow enough yet where we want to be using our flaps because if we put the landing gear or flaps out now, we're literally going to end up ripping the stuff off from underneath the aircraft. I don't think this has been modelled for that. So you can see here, when we're outside, it gives you your, your waypoint, how fast you're going, what your engines are doing, how much fuel you've got, your angle of attack, which is essentially where your nose is in relation to speeds in for going up and down. And then this is our set altitude, what our altitude currently is, where our trim is to keep us level, our flaps and our vertical speeds. So that's saying we're going down minus 55 drop down here you should see there so it's still not quite dropping down yet I want nope not to there. Well, there we go drop it down fully we're now turning round if you have a look we've got a slight turn coming up there for our fight and then we're leveled up for final approach down when we hit that waypoint there I'll put the flaps on and I'll also lower the landing gear because we should be Past our desail point as well. Oh, our desail points moved a bit further along, but regardless, we should be underneath 200. Well, we're at the 200 mark, which would be more than enough speed for us to do it. It's nice to see, like I say. When we were up in the clouds earlier, literally the whole thing started icing up, so it's nice for it to now get a bit level. We have got some other angles as well at the moment because it's night time. You don't really get the full view of it, but you've got your landing view where it lifts you up a bit more to see it. 
um, your standard pilot view. You have your co-pilot as well. And then if you want to have a look at all the instrument panels, it does give you all the individual panels as well. Again, you can just close that down completely and then use your mouse keys to do it and look around, which is what I've generally been doing just because it's a bit more fluid for me. But you do have those options. Now I'm hoping they'll give you the chance to um, I'm hoping they'll give you the chance to use hotkeys with them and set up some hotkeys with them so you can do it all without needing to open that panel. But essentially what you've got is your ATC, your cameras, your checklists, your um, basic controls. So that because I've got that down for my joystick there, and then it you can have your AI control or co-pilot. Your fuel and balance, weight and balance, your log, objectives, your traveling to, BFR map, and your custom tools. So we're now sitting around the 200 mark. We're not going to be too far now. Have a look down here. The only issue you've got with these airliners at the moment is it struggles performance wise when it comes to the airliners. I've seen people with. Machines with 10, 1080 Ti's, I've seen people with 2080 Ti's and um, Intel 10th Gen 900K's all struggling to get above 20K, um, 20 FPS in the airliners. Go out of the airliners, then you can absolutely smash it. But for some reason, the actual airliners are really struggling to keep um, the FPS high. I think it's because of how detailed these models are inside. Okay, yes, not all the switches work, but the actual level of display detail is so high that it's causing it to struggle with the textures. Because as soon as you go out, it goes straight back up. Now, randomly, we're level. But it kind of feels like, I don't know about to you guys, but it feels like we're kind of at an angle like that, even though, according to the... altimeter and the little EFD display uh, we are slightly going up now I suppose so why are we there what's causing us to have the drag could just be could just be because of the speed we're at it's to keep us at a pod to keep us at the level so maybe I will drop the flaps down a notch Now don't let's if I put the wing lights on, just so you can see outside a bit better. Not that it makes that much of a difference, but you should. Fortunately, they're at the front, so you can't really see it. But you should have see the wings there. If we go to this view, showcase view. There we go. A little bit outside the window. Got the engine just there, so this is inside. Unfortunately, didn't let you move it, but this is inside one of the window views from the passenger cab. Doesn't seem to have made much of a difference. We're still seeming to be uh, angling it like that for some reason. Um, let me. The reason I'm on YouTube again for this particular one is because it's a new, the new flight sim. Um, I'm, I am not going to be tw doing it on Twitch as well. But with it being a new sim, I thought I'll do a, a couple on YouTube as well, just so it's kind of cross-platform. Got a few different ones on each one because it's new, gives people a chance to look at it, especially in it, in its first couple of weeks, because people might be looking to see some content on it just to see how it works what happens and just see what it's like so I've done a couple of streams now on here just to give them a bit of an idea for people that might be interested in looking at it now that's our airport over there so we're coming into the final stages I haven't had any information from them for a while now on it which worries me Because we're coming up to our final couple of waypoints. So. We've got it set so it's for three alleys while it wants us to land on. 
So that's what we'll be setting them to. While it's hot, while it's wheeling it all the way there. Now I was watching somebody else in a 787, which is one of the other airliners you get in this, and he was having the same issue where while he was cruising, it was almost cruising like that as opposed to like that for some reason. It's one of those, I think, as good as the game is, I think the airliners have come too soon. I think they could have done a bit, held them back a bit longer and just polished them a bit more before releasing the airliners into the sim. Because all of the other aircraft work absolutely great, but the airliners has a few issues. It's only a few. It's only a few, like for instance, the it going like that. Um, the frame, because it's frame rate when you're in the cockpit, because it hasn't been optimized. And there's a few other little things, like a few tweaks they could do. They fixed the air autopilot now, which is great. Let's give the goal a call. Thank you very much. Yep, we'll be doing that. So what's it got it down for our approach phase? If we go to Perth, then it's landing config three. And it wants us at about one eight five speed. Seems a bit high for me, but we'll go with it. What I'm gonna do is put on constraints, localizer now, LS. Don't know, I've done one that one yet, we'll wait until we get to that one. Once these diamonds pick up, we'll put the localizer and then the approach on. And then um, it will line us up ready for it. And then we can get this thing down. Not too far now. And if we look out the window, you can see that we're definitely coming up to Paris. You can see the uh, size of it here. Don't know if that's something on the ground or if these are different air airports, maybe. Our one's over there, I believe. The one good thing about this particular flight sim is you can do BFR flight nice and easy. I did one round um, Essex Way the other day in the UK and literally was following the roads all the way back to, a, like, to an airport that I knew was at the end of that road. Essentially, you can go from South End in Essex, follow the M11 all the way up and get to Stansted, but you can actually do it in the game because you can find the road network that, to do it and you can do it without using any instruments really well detailed okay we're coming up to that final approach and that's coming up into the 20 20 nautical miles from being distance so it's not going to be far at all oh what's that moving on there There you go, we've got that arrow there to say it's um, picking up that part of the glide slope. And for some reason, we're still wheeling it all the way along. But yeah, if you zoom in, like I say, all the street lights, buildings and everything, they're all rendered. Here we go, we're turning round. Okay, acknowledge. We'll do the first, let's, um, we'll do the first level flaps. Once the speed hits to, hits there for the flap level, we'll then put the second level in. Okay. The reason I keep looking this way is because that's where I've got the ATC stuff. You can actually pop it out and put it on a different screen 
because if I don't, it takes up real estate on here, which means you get to see all the menus where I'll show you what I mean. So it comes all up here like that, and then obviously you've got to move it around to try and see everything. But what you can do is just pop it out, and then it sticks out the side so you can easily. Here we go. It's quite good that you can see all the lights reflecting off the clouds. I quite like that. Right, that's our landing level. Okay, let's put the landing gear down. Now I'm sure I've got a view somewhere for that. Here we go. The landing gear view. And there's our airport just over there. I suppose I should... Oh, no, wrong one. I suppose I should get into the cockpit now so we can do the landing. So landing gears down, we've got the flaps down, the speed brake is armed. I've already set it to medium auto brakes, which is good. Okay. What was the speed it wanted us at? About 185. We're under that already, so that's fine. Okay. Quickly set the set it for the landing so we can see. In fact, as you know, I want this back to normal. Because that's gonna it'll be I'm used to this view. Localizer and approach. Set the approach up. So there's our first um glide scope for Left and right, as you can see, we're too high at the moment, so I'm setting that down to I'm getting that set down so we can go down to the correct air um, altitude and then we'll get that sorted. So we're landing on. Oh. Are we landing or is it? Nope, it's crashed. Well, that's good, isn't it? We got all the way to the bloody airport and then a bloody thing crashed. Simulator. I need to sort that out. This is the third crash of the day, that is. Which is a pain. All that tra traveling to get to the bloody airport and then it crashes on me. See, it's got its issues. It still needs to be... Um, still needs to be ironed out and fixed and optimized once they get all that side sorted it'll be a lot better that's a pain in the ass that is you can you can go absolute ages without it crashing and then all of a sudden we'll just do it completely out of the blue and the problem is it's not a slow simulator to load up that's a pain but since it's crashed what i'll do is i'll load it in at Paris in one of the other aircraft, I'll quickly put it on to um, daytime as well, so you can actually see it and have a look properly. Now that's bright screen that is. And then we'll have a little explore of Paris. So yeah, apologies for that, people that are watching. Bloody... It's had its few issues where it's crashed a couple of times. It's not all the time, but it is. It does happen still, but it is still waiting to be optimized. So there is still a few things it needs to work out. Let's load it in and then we'll have a quick look around. And then what I'll do is I'll call it a night on here. I will be moving across to Twitch where I'll be doing some Warzone a bit later on, possibly. We'll have a look and see if the team's still on when I finish this. Kind of left them to it for the for tonight so far because I've been doing this. But I'm sure we'll get an hour or two on that still. No now. There we go.
So we'll get this loaded and then we'll load it into the correct back at that airport. And, it's just, and then we can explore Paris during the day and then everyone can have a look and see the um, level of detail. One of that loads in. The music might stop, but it is still there. It's just because Flight, Flight Simulator likes you to be perfectly on the uh, active window for it to give you the sound. I'm just quickly going in to my studio. There we go, just having a quick look at the data. Well, it's loading up, sorry about this, we'll be back in the air shortly and then we'll be able to get this working as well. Okay, close it down, there we go, get the music back. And then we can get this back up and running. Bit of a shame, bit of a pain that that's happened. As you can see, the loading times for this game is absolutely ridiculous. They could do with um, figuring out a way to shorten those down as well. Especially while it's having issues with all these crashes. Crash the desktops with CTDs is an issue that they are aware of and they are currently working on solutions for. Tell you what, let me let me just quickly get on to to if I go on to There you go. All sorted. Yeah, they do. They do while they're getting themselves sorted. They didn't used to, but unfortunately, they don't. Um, unfortunately, they don't really optimize them as much as they used to. They used to actually do a lot more work behind the scenes before. GA large, have we got GA medium, GA medium, yeah we're good. They normally do a lot more behind the scenes to get it to work before doing that. And what we got, we've got, we, if we click that as a point, so it takes us over that way. Change the flight conditions, we want to go to all and then uh, all players, presets, we're going to set this into the daytime. Let's say about 12.51, yeah, that'll do. We'll choose live weather. If it's too bad, we can change it a bit later on. Let's get that loaded up and then we can get this bird in the air and have a look at it in... Um... And then we can have a look at it in the daytime.
I don't know. I mean, you do get that sometimes. Unfortunately, you do get some clicks that come through and then just think it's think they're being funny. It did get picked up by the filter and said it was hidden, but I had to open it up to have a quick look to see what it said, which is when it showed up. And then all I did was remove the comment because let's face it, it's not required. And it's just childish. If people want to be children, they can be, but they're not going to be children on my stream. But, or in regards to doing ch childish behaviour anyway. I'm all up for having a laugh and having a good... And enjoying the... Uh, and having a bit of fun. But... You know. No need for that kind of rubbish. Right, so we're nearly there, and then we can have a look and see. Yeah, there's a few people going on. Um, Alice is probably falling asleep. Joe is... Don't know where Joe has disappeared to. I'm guessing Paul's probably gone to sleep or he's playing on um, FIFA. James, I don't know. He probably left shortly after his um, comment. And then um, there's you. It's all right. I have a few more will come in at some stage, or if not, hopefully it will start moving on from there. Are you playing Warzone as well, Lemmy? Well, it was raining then. God, this game takes ages to load up things. It's been half your, half your life waiting for this thing to load up. Can't believe it. We It was so close and it crashed right on the final approach. It's annoyed me a little bit that that's because that's like an hour and 45 minutes wasted. It gave everybody a chance to see the airline, the um, airliner. Here we go. We're now in. Welcome to Charles de Gaulle Airport. Oh shit, I've chosen the airliner again. Nope, crashed again. Right, okay, I'm going to have to call it on this because it's having issues for some reason. It keeps um, crashing. So I'll give it another go a bit later. And um, if it plays up still, then I'll have to work around it that way. So apologies for that. I'll have a little look and see if we can um, get it sorted. And then to, uh, probably tomorrow now, I will do a, a quick stream what we were planning in... Paris and then getting that through so people can have a look at that but yeah so if you have enjoyed it minus the technical difficulties feel free to hit the like button subscribe and get the bell on and then like I said we'll have more content coming through and hopefully they will get the issues sorted and then we'll um, be able to do a bit more intense flying on it 
But until the next time, I've been Character Gamer, and I'll see you in the next one.